VNS3 acts as a virtual firewall router switch, protocol redistributor, and extensible NFV container. Today we'll start by creating our VPC environment for VNS3, and then from EC2 we will launch a VNS3 controller, and then initialize and configure it with the basic settings. If you need help along the way, at any point please check our website at cohesive.net and you can follow the support to documentation and you'll find all of our configuration guides as well as configuration and administration guides for all current versions of VNS3. Under networking click VPC. We will launch the VPC wizard and create a new VPC. We recommend that you start with either a single public subnet or public and private subnets. No matter what kind of topology you're creating, VNS3 will always need a public subnet. VPC CIDR and VPC subnets cannot overlap with your VNS3 subnets. So we'll make sure to do 173.31.2.0/24 for our CIDR subnet. We'll name it demo mv and our public subnet will be 173.31.2.0/25 Here are the network ACLs created by our wizard. You'll notice that all inbound and outbound rules are open. We recommend that you leave it open while you're configuring and then later you can lock down your network ACLs to fit your use case. Next, for security groups, you'll have the default security group set up from the wizard. It currently allows all in the same security group. We're going to go in and add custom TCP rule from port 8000, your IP address. We'll find that out by going to whatismyipaddress.com. We also recommend custom UDP port 500 from the IP address of your data center based device or other endpoint. So we'll make it up and call it 1.2.3.4 slash 32. And the other basic one is custom protocol rule ESP50. Also from the IP of your data center or other device. Some optional rules are TCP8000 from the IP address of your other VNS3 devices that you plan to mesh together and you'll need to add UDP 4500 for if you plan to use NAT traversal and UDP 1195 through 1197 for other VNS3 devices in separate VPCs that you plan to connect. Click Save and switch services over to EC2. <clears throat> Click on AMIs and sort by private image. Search by the AMI ID. Otherwise, you can launch from the AWS Marketplace. Click Launch. Cohesive recommends the M3 medium size. Next, we'll launch in the VPC we just created and the subnet. Select existing security group. So this is the security group we just edited. You'll get a warning that you don't have port 22 open that you do not need to SSH into your instance. Click Launch and choose Proceed Without a Key Pair. We'll take care of this in the initialization step. For instance, we'll take a few minutes to launch initially. While we're waiting, we can go and create an elastic IP. Click Allocate New Address for use in VPC. Yes, Allocate. Select it. And from the Actions drop-down, click Associate, and you can search by your Instance ID. Click Associate. And back on your Instances page, you'll now see the Elastic IP assigned. <laughs> Actions. Networking. Click Change Source Destination Check. We're going to disable this. And once our instance has fully launched and configured, Grab the public DNS name, open a new tab, and type in https colon slash slash, paste your DNS, colon port 8000 for 8000 access. You might get a warning like this, say proceed anyways. 
and you'll be asked for authentication. Your username is BNS cubed, and the password is your instance ID. You'll get this big red sign to change your admin password. So to change your admin password and change your API password as well. Please make it more secure than this. Then you'll be prompted to log in again. 